just for Sidekicks Part 2, the main characters this time, starts off in the middle of the previous episode, with the main six leaving Spike and heading for the train station. It seems that the Crystal Empire is in the running to host the Equestria Games, and Cadence has made a request for Twilight and her friends to form a welcoming committee for the Games Inspector. Unfortunately, they don't know what the Games Inspector looks like. Their only clue is that she has a flower pattern on her luggage. So they grab the first pony they see with luggage fitting that description, even though it's almost immediately obvious that this isn't who they're looking for. The episode is even aware of this as it cuts to the real Games Inspector left waiting at the station right after everyone else leaves. The girls give the not Games Inspector a tour of the palace, and of course, everything goes horribly wrong before they finally realize their mistake. Seriously, you waited until now to ask what her name is? The ironic part about that is we never actually hear this character's name spoken in the episode, though she is given a lot of characterization. Interestingly, one character trait that gets a lot of development is that she seems to have claustrophobia, but it only comes up when she's in large, empty rooms. Maybe it's something about the open space inviting the feeling of wanting to run around, but the nature of it being an enclosed environment makes it feel uncomfortable and confining. At least that's the impression I got. But at the same time, she doesn't completely freak out right away. She actually tries to manage it. She can focus her attention on other things to try and calm down. And when she absolutely has to go outside, she tries to be polite and considerate to those around her. It's really surprising that this much detail went into a character who at this point seems like just a one-off. Meanwhile, most of the misunderstandings come from Rainbow Dash constantly jumping to conclusions in the most face-palmingly forced way possible. Honestly, what is the deal here? Season 3 has had some of the best episodes for Rainbow Dash, but she gets hit with the idiot stick every time she's in the Crystal Empire. In the end, though, the real Games Inspector, the not Games Inspector, and Princess Cadence all run into each other. The Inspector goes on about how she's tired of always getting the same song and dance routine every time she visits one of these cities just because everyone wants to impress her. But Nameless Girl tells her that she's had the best time ever thanks to the welcoming committee. The Inspector is still angry about being left at the train station, but she takes the other woman's story as being an unbiased appraisal of the Crystal Empire. Um, actually no. She got the same song and dance routine that you were just complaining about. The same routine that had been meant for you because they were trying to impress you. The only difference is that she isn't jaded about it like you are. But whatever. Because of that, the Crystal Empire is chosen to host the Equestria Games, which I'm assuming we'll see later unless the show forgets about it. It's hard to judge this episode without comparing it to Just for Sidekicks, as they're basically two parts of the same story. And frankly, I like Just for Sidekicks better. A lot of the big in-your-face jokes in this episode are, well, big and in-your-face. I just didn't think it was that funny, and Rainbow Dash especially is kind of a downer. Also, just a minor gripe, it seems it only took three episodes for me to get completely sick of the sunshine rhyme every time Cadence and Twilight see each other. It was really charming in a Cantalot wedding, and I understand bringing it back in the season three premiere, but it kind of feels like it's run its course by now. Still, I really appreciated finally getting to see Cadence in shining armor just being normal for once. We also get to see Rainbow Dash's dad during a flashback, and maybe your mom too, if you notice the eye color. And while the big jokes didn't really work that well, I did like a lot of the smaller moments, like a quick glimpse of the games inspector getting splashed by a puddle while everyone's running past her, or Rainbow crashing into a spa and then sliding down. I gotta admit, the timing in that scene just had me cracking up. One bit with Pinkie Pie even started off kind of obnoxious, but then... Holy crap, does she pull out an Animaniacs reference? I'm not sure whether or not to call that a win. There's also some really great character development as Twilight finally learns how to get her obsessive anxiety under control, which also makes it even funnier and more justified when she does freak out later. Ultimately though, you've seen this kind of story played out a million times before. And to be fair, the same thing was also true in Just for Sidekicks, but at least that one had a few unique turns here and there. This episode, on the other hand, goes exactly how you think it will. And the sad part is, there are times when it doesn't even just justify its own conventions very well. Why can't anyone tell this isn't the real games inspector when she never has a professional attitude? Why wouldn't Twilight simply try to confirm who she was when they first met her? And after the real games inspector has such a rotten day, why does everything turn out well in the end, except to apparently set up a future episode? And also, why does Cadence go out of her way to explain what a mud bath is when they already have a spa back home? This isn't a new thing. Overall, this episode was okay. It's actually not bad, but but it's not that great either. Much like Spike at your service, there are some good ideas here, it's just kind of a shame that they aren't used in a better episode. Games Ponies Play gets a 6 out of 10.